Well, good evening and welcome to Talk the Walk. My name's John DeCecco and thank you for being a part of our program tonight. And uh, we just want to say hello to all the Centerpoint Church uh, listeners, both here in Australia and the Philippines and any friends that are watching, we welcome you. And tonight I have a special friend uh, with me all the way from Adelaide. And uh, let's welcome Pastor Danny Guglamucci, known to many. G'day, Pastor Danny. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, nice to spend this time with you. I couldn't think of anything nicer than to catch up with my friends at Centerpoint Church. I haven't seen you for ages, but it's nice to connect with you. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a time, hasn't it? We've tried to get you down a couple of times, but obviously um, with the obvious challenges you have been having, um, yeah. yeah, we haven't been able to do that, but how great's technology? Oh, unbelievable. Thank God we can uh, still stay connected and uh, this is a wonderful way of doing it and uh, I don't have to get on an aeroplane. Well, <laughs> so exactly. But I would still rather be with you in person, but this is great. Okay, that's well, that's true. That's true. Well, we can't wait to um, have you back with us, and um, obviously, hopefully, we can have Sharon too. We yeah, that'd be lovely. Sharon, how's, how's Sharon going? She's doing good. I mean, she's got to look after me and you get me all my medications. Uh, I'm starting a new religion called the Gospel because I'm on so many pills. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be what hasn't changed is you haven't lost your personality and uh, your sense of humour, mate. No, so, no, no. Fantastic. Thank you for coming on tonight. And I know you have several of these Zooms going uh, uh, during the day and the evening. So we really appreciate your time and your love and obviously um, your input and the years of being such a statesman in the kingdom. And um, obviously to hear from you tonight, it's just going to be a blessing for us. My pleasure. My pleasure. So yeah, just keep sending those likes and thumbs up, sending those messages uh, to uh, Pastor Danny, and uh, I know that uh, he loves every encouragement um, that you bring. So tonight, what I thought we'd uh, start off with is maybe just um, share a little bit, and I, I'm sure many know about your journey, but yeah. you know, given the current situation, um, obviously the two years uh, that you've been, um, you know, battling uh, yeah. with, with cancer, that's settled, uh, but now there's some new challenges. Yeah, yeah. Well, the interesting thing is because my uh, cancer was in the blood, they found it in the bone marrow, but it was a form of blood cancer. And uh, apparently when we're born, we're all born with what they call a CMV virus, which is in our system mm. and our immune system uh, keeps it at bay when everything's working properly. My issue is that my immune system isn't working properly. I have uh, uh, immunotherapy once a month, immunoglobulin, they call a product they put into a blood product they give you. Thank God for people that give blood. Hey, that's so, so grateful. Um, but um, so I have that therapy, but sadly the virus has gone to my eyes at, at the time. Recently it was in my uh, bowel. Now it's gone to my eyes. And so I've lost a lot of vision. My right eye is pretty well blind and my left eye, is struggling as well. So it's, I'm not lying to you. Uh, it's scary yeah. to think of not having sight, you know, uh, that's sort of probably a big challenge to me more than even the cancer. But, you know, when I was diagnosed with cancer, John, um, probably the first 20 minutes of being told that I felt this overwhelming darkness and sense of, wow, you know, um, how am I going to handle this? You know, but within about 20 minutes, half an hour, three things happened to me that I believe is available to all of us is this unbelievable peace filled my room. It was beyond any description. In fact, I started weeping and the people around me thought I was weeping in sorrow, but I was actually weeping with the overwhelming sense of God's peace. Um, and, you know, we always talk about God's presence. Yeah. And the only way I can say this to all of you listening tonight is I just knew, I don't know how I knew, but I just knew God was present. Wow. You know, I had his peace, but I also knew he was present. And while it wasn't a feelings thing, it was internally a knowing yeah. that he was there. And the funny thing is the nurses would come into the hospital and they go, what's the aura in this room? Wow. What's going on here? And the thing I want to say, especially in this coronavirus time, 
is the third thing that happened is God's purpose for my life didn't change because of my condition. Wow. And what happened was I ended up praying. One lady said to me, how can you still believe in God after all you've gone through with my Bible sitting next to my bed? And I said, um, do you believe in eternity? And she goes, I've never thought about it. And I started talking to her about eternal life and that this life can be unfair sometimes mm. in this fallen planet that we live on, mm. on this fallen planet we live on. And as I began to talk to her about eternity, um, she said, my brother died of cancer. That's why I became a nurse. And my marriage is busted up and life really sucks. And if you tell me that your God fixes everything down here, I don't believe it. Yeah. But if you tell me there's a better way coming after this one, I could get hold of that. And then she looked at me and she says, can you give me a hug? Mm. And I give this older lady who's just serving in the hospital a hug. And the Lord said to me, my purpose is not bound to a pulpit because I'll always give you a platform. So good. And so in my sickness, in my brokenness, God's peace, him being present, and his purpose has never left my life. Yeah. And so why would we worry about a coronavirus mm. affecting us? I mean, we need to take caution, but, you know, we've got to do all that we can. But I, I, I don't carry fear yeah. because I have eternal hope. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely in a time where things are changing and it's something that you've uh, been navigating for years. And uh, if we think about it, you know, change comes daily. In, in some cases, but, but in a case like this, when, you know, I guess globally, uh, the world has been hit with a change that actually has affected uh, the world in many ways the same. Um, uh, and along with these changes comes the challenges and the conflict to navigate the crisis. How important um, is having the ability or the understanding or even the process of navigating change and, and why do you think it's important? Yeah. Well, I actually think, and this might be contrary to what we've heard, let me just wind back and say, John, I have been concerned for about 10 years now that we've only preached half the gospel. We haven't preached the full gospel because when I look at the gospel being preached, from the book of Acts all the way through to Paul and Peter in, in all their letters, every conversation about the gospel had a major part to talk about heaven and eternity and that all our suffering has purpose because of our eternal hope. Yeah. Now, you know, I hear this preaching now that you can have your better life now, you can have this now, you can have that now, and there's elements of truth in that, but it's only half the story when you look at the Bible narrative. Now, I'm not trying to be smart by using the same letters, but it's the only way I remember it. The Bible has protected me. The Bible has promised things to me. The Bible has uh, propelled me into my destiny. It's prophesied to me. So the Bible is not my suggestion book. It's my roadmap to life. Yeah. And in the Bible, we see that the church is the greatest in the midst of a storm. Mm. The church shines brightest in the midst of change. We should be agents of that mm. for the world to see. Yeah. So the apostle Paul in second Corinthians chapter six, he goes, Hey guys, I've gone hungry and I've been full. I've been smashed about and I've been comfortable. Yeah. You know, I've had nothing and I've had everything. And I think the church of Jesus was born to live with contrast. Yeah. And the thought that came to me when I was praying for you guys this morning was the story in Daniel of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into a fiery furnace. But the thing that got me, John, was um, they knew favour and fire. Mm. So they lived in a palace with a king where the favour was bestowed on them and they understood incredible favour from a heathen king but they also had favor in the fire. Yeah, so good. And when they got thrown into the fire, mm. they didn't behave any different than when they were in the favor. Mm. And I thought about it when I was praying for you guys this morning and I thought that's because they were prepared for the fire before the fire. That's awesome, yeah. We prepare for fire mm. because God prepares us for anything that can come our way. 
yeah. because they became a, a testimony to the biggest critics. When they got thrown into the fire, the very people that threw them in there, they became a testimony to. We should be a testimony to our greatest critics in the fire mm. and the favour. Mm. If we can handle the favour, we can handle the fire and the favour doesn't leave in the fire. Jesus was in the fire with those boys, Amen. you know, and the only thing that was burnt was the ropes. Mm. When we go through the fire like we're going through now, the only thing that gets stripped away is the things that hold us back from walking, still walking. Mm. And the ropes were cut off, but they didn't get burnt, only the ropes. Yeah. And in times like this, we learn so much about ourselves. Yeah. And we learn that in this season, we can do all things. We yeah. can do all things because of our faith. Yeah. So good. And, and yeah, you do, we don't want, and obviously as ministers of the gospel, we don't want people to shy away from uh, navigating change and, and the challenge of that and the conflict of that and the crisis of that. Because uh, again, I was reading the book of Acts and hey, what, what, what an amazing um, time to be able to study that again. And, and I'm reminded that the church was birthed during crisis, in crisis, Jesus was with them and all of a sudden he was gone. Peter now had to preach to multitudes, to the crowd and the chaos that that brought. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had to change, you know, yeah. going from a, uh, you know, going fishing. All of a sudden, there was a there was a change. He had to come back to the reality of why Jesus came and and what he did when he left. So, absolutely, I, I think for our listeners, one of the the questions that I have for you, uh, in terms of uh, our spiritual lives, and you you have touched on that, but maybe just expand a little bit more. What are some key factors you have found essential or vital? to navigate the changes in your life. And, you know, uh, some of those have been uh, dramatic. Some of those have been yeah. devastating. So, so yeah. can you just, from a personal perspective, share some of those key factors? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Uh, I've never said this before, John, but again, I was praying for you guys this morning and I wrote this down, that personal conversion must come before corporate convincing. Wow. Wow. See, a lot of people come to church on a Sunday and get convinced. Yeah. But then something goes wrong, they get unconvinced. <laughs> and, and see, for me, the church isn't what feeds me first. I have a walk with Jesus every day that feeds me first. And because that feeds me first, not only do I come to the church ready to give to others, yeah, wow. ready to give to God. So we need to come together. This excuse that we don't need to go to church anymore because we're doing church at home is a total misunderstanding of the gospel. Because we need to press the flesh. We need to be together. The problem is we need the power of and, not or. Yeah. And I need to walk with God personally and all those other things are added to me. And so what's happened through my journey is I asked Jesus to let me know what was going on. Yeah. Please let me know what's going on. Now, when you read a scripture like this, I'm just going to read um, a passage of scripture. I just typed them up here so... I don't have to open up too many books and stuff while we're online. Dear brothers and sisters, James 1, 1 to 8. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard people, John, say over the years, the best thing that happened to me was cancer. And I go, what? That's ridiculous, you know? Yeah, I can understand where they're coming from because, you know, when I got cancer, if somebody scratched my car, it didn't matter anymore. <laughs> if I lived in the right suburb, it didn't matter anymore. If I had a house bigger than somebody else's, it didn't matter anymore. Uh, you know, all that mattered was... Can I live another day to proclaim the good news? Can I hug my grandkids again? Can I, you know, the things that really mattered. And what happened was I got to a place, this sounds arrogant, guys, but please, you know, my heart, those of you that know me, is I came to a place where I felt I needed nothing. As long as I've got God, even death won't get in the way. Mm. So as long as I know that I've got eternity in my heart. And so what happened is I started to go over Believe it or not, when you've been preaching for 40 years, I started going over some of the sermons I preached in the 80s and 90s to see if I still believed what I preached. Wow. 
And I want to go through one that I think will help everybody. It's not, I'm not going to preach it as a sermon, but if you guys, let me give, let Uncle Danny give you some homework. <laughs> Uncle Danny says, go to Acts chapter 27. Now, I want to preface this, John, by saying, when Chris passed away, my son, in 2016, I was so heartbroken. And you know what? The other day I looked at his photo, just burst into tears for about half an hour. I was a mess. Yeah. So it, the pain doesn't go away, but Jesus walks with you in the pain. And I remember when he passed away, I said to God in 2016, where do I turn? Where do I go? What psychologist can mess up, fix up my messed up head, you know, my heart? And the Lord said, what about practicing the sermons you've preached to everybody else? Mm. And you know, John, I went to an old box of handwritten sermons and this is the first one I pulled up. And it was out of Acts 27 where Paul is in a storm and they're about to be shipwrecked. And he actually stands up in the boat and he does, they do five things. And I want to give them to you because it answers your question, I think. The first thing he said was stay in the boat. Don't jump ship. While you're in a storm, don't jump ship, stay in the boat. And what I feel, I used to think the boat was the church. And it, and it certainly can be, and it, and it should be part of that narrative. Yeah. But the boat for me are my non-negotiable conviction. Right. Staying in the boat for me are the things that I cannot deny about Jesus. And, you know, as you get older, guys, please hear my heart here. As you get older, you don't need all the answers. You just need the right ones. That's awesome. You don't need all the answers because you're never going to have them. Mm. But I need to have the right ones. I need to have the ones that I know are non-negotiable. Did Jesus save me? Did he call me? I remember when he called me into the ministry. I remember when he supernaturally provided our building. I remember all those supernatural God appointments that I can't deny. So when there's things I don't understand, I hang on to those things I can't deny that were God. I stay in the boat. Then Paul says, take food. Who's going to eat when you're in a storm? I mean, you feel sick. If I was in a massive storm, I don't think I'd be thinking of a buffet. I don't think I'd be thinking of a couple of Mars bars and a Diet Coke. You know, <laughs> if I was in a storm, you know, you know what Paul did? He took bread. Yes. He just took basic bread broke it and the lord spoke to my heart he says when you're in a storm you just need the basics you need those things that sustain you in the word of god that are not negotiable they might not look trendy they might not look immediately successful but they are the basic keeping you together sustenance the word of god and you know i could take hours to go through scripture after scripture after scripture in my cancer journey mm -hmm. but guys i don't need the church to walk with jesus i need the church to encourage me i need the church to teach me uh, and it does help me walk with jesus but it starts with my personal walk with him every day so he took food and then he gave thanks mm -hmm. you're in a storm you get a piece of bread and you give thanks you know we need to keep a right attitude in our storm yeah there's people that live like we are living now for a short time in third world countries. And you've seen in the Philippines, the challenges and people don't live like we live in the Western gospel. Mm. They live very, very differently. And we need to, even in the midst of the storm, give thanks. Yeah. Give thanks. God, we thank you that you're with us in the storm, you know, and then they lightened the ship. Mm. You know, when you're in a storm, you get rid of all the things you don't need anymore. That's you lighten, they threw overboard all the yeah. stuff that was weighing them down. My wife, as we are talking right now, is in the other room cleaning out cupboards, getting rid of 40 year old uh, school books and stuff, and stuff that we might not need anymore. Some we're going to keep, of course, for good memory. But you know, I've cleaned out the shed. You know, it's amazing when you're in a storm, don't waste the storm, get rid of the stuff you don't need anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so get rid of bitterness, get rid of unforgiveness, Come on. get rid of anger. Get rid of, she did that to me, he did that to me. I'm not going back to that church after the way they treated me. Mm. Now, we've got to get rid of that stuff. If we're walking with God, we need to be deeper than that. Yeah, yeah. And so you get rid of the, um, the things that don't matter. And then they cut off the anchors. And I said to God, what does that mean? This was 1989. I said, what does that mean? He said, 
lower the anchors means having done everything, trust. Yeah. You lower the anchors. You just trust everything to God. Yeah. And you trust. And you know what? That's not a sermon to me. Mm. That's a lifestyle. Sure, sure. And so, John, I, I stay in the boat. I stay in the word. Yeah. I stay thankful. I'm trying to get rid of the things that don't matter. And I'm trusting God all yeah. the way. Yeah. And I think those of you watching, is that a little sermonette, sermonette from Pastor Danny? No, no. It's a truth to be lived. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I hope to live that truth every day. Yeah, that's amazing. So good, so good. Awesome. Okay, so in regards to uh, when, you know, change comes knocking at our door, Pastor Danny, obviously there's the, the emotions that, are, that straight away, um, I guess we release those things because we're not robots. Yeah. We're, 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 we're human beings that have emotions. But yes, yes, how, yes. How do, we, how do we acknowledge, okay, a change is coming. How do we go through the stretch of that change without shattering and then how do we bend without breaking um so in i mean i think you've already answered that in um you know the previous questions but just just because i've asked the question maybe yeah 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 yeah, give yeah. Us, what does what does that process look for danny pastor or danny guglamucci not the pastor the person what does that look like yeah. when change comes a knocking at your door well, if I can use the illustration, John, of when I first started the church down south in Adelaide and uh, for five minutes I was the fourth member of the Trinity. Everybody loved me so much. <laughs> you know, they thought that this guy, he's unbelievable until one day somebody said to me, there's got to be something wrong because this looks too good to be true. <laughs> I, thought, I need to go and do something really bad now just to prove that, I, <laughs> you know, it's just you can't win. And... Uh, that was okay for a while, but then change started to happen. Yeah. The church grew, that brought change. When a baby comes home, and you know, with a new grandchild, baby comes home, everything, the whole house changes. Yeah. You know, not everything always goes to order. Sometimes the water will boil on the stove, you know, because you're not getting to the stove quick enough because yeah. you're changing a nappy. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody's running around. And so what happened was I said, God, I come from a traditional Italian background where not much has changed in 50 years. When my father still talk a lot of this, you know, you know, there's not a lot that's changed in 50, 60 years. He's still, you know, not talk about a good English, you know. Yeah. And so now I'm thrown into a world of change. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened, John, and I don't want to super spiritualize it, but it's just the way it happened. Uh, I said to God one day, I don't want to bring change that's just change sake. Yeah. But if you are changing things, then it's mm -hmm. divine change. Yeah. And when divine change comes, uh, what do I do? Uh, how do I process that? And he took me to Luke chapter 5 where Jesus tells Peter to push his boat out and launch into the deep. And he goes, no, we don't want this change because we've been doing it all our lives and we've been fishing all night and nothing's happened. Basically, leave us to the fishing, Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus said, no, you need to do this. And this is what Peter said. Well, two things. First, it says, after Jesus finished speaking. So a lot of people step out in faith, John, but it's only presumption mm. because we've got to wait for Jesus to finish speaking before we change. So, good. so after Jesus finished speaking, Peter launched in the deep and he said, I don't want to do this, he said to Jesus, but if you say so. Yeah, yeah. Nevertheless, at your word, if you're telling me to do this, as much as I hate it and I don't feel comfortable with it, I will do it. I yeah. will launch it. You know, when I handed the church over to Pastor Jonathan Fontana Rosa, I think I had another 10 years in me to run that church because I wasn't tired. Yeah. But I remember after Jesus finished speaking, wow. I realised I have to now change. Mm -hmm. So I made the change based on... What is it? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I made the change because I was convicted God wanted that change. Yeah. Now, I wasn't to know my son was going to die. I wasn't to know I was going to get cancer. I wasn't to know I was going to have bowel surgery and now loss of sight. Can you imagine having the full leadership of running a church that's still growing with such a broken body and Jesus didn't take away my ministry. He repositioned my ministry and that's change. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, so wow. I, I hope that that's how I've processed change. I, I say to God, I don't like change. I'm honest. I don't like change. 
you know, I get nervous, like even going on this modern technology and getting tripods and using Zoom and I, I'm the old school. I was never taught this stuff. And my natural bent is, ah, forget it. Yeah. They can ring me up. I'll talk to them on the phone. Yeah. And then there's a little thing inside of me saying, change, change. You need to do this. So now I'm a Zoomomatic. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, if I'm an Instagrammer. <laughs> if, uh, if you've just tuned in, uh, you're listening to Talk the Walk, and uh, my uh, guest this evening is a special friend, Pastor Danny Guglamucci. And if you've missed some of this, it's okay. You can go to our uh, webpage or also YouTube, uh, which after you uh, hear it tonight or the finish it tonight, you can catch the start of this. So uh, we thank you for being a part of the program. And Pastor Danny, I thank you for being so uh, transparent and also uh, just open with your life as you always have been, which is amazing. So as we come to a close, there's a, uh, another question. Then I might get you to pray for our, our viewers and, and listeners. Um, you know, during this time, and I've spoken to a lot of people, even some pastors, I've found that uh, people have said that they've they've found an increase of time um, but then again they've also said equally with the increase of time there's also been a, an increase of distraction and yes. uh, we, we we need to be careful because if we're distracted we lose traction so maybe tonight um, can you just uh, give us some keys if we want to use the word some helps um, if we have lost traction during this time of distraction um, what's What's some of the things that we can do to get back on track? Uh, yeah. Productivity. And when I talk about productivity, I mean, you know, producing fruit that lasts, like the Bible says. What's, what's yeah. some ways we can do that? Well, it's funny. You just said, you, you really blow me away, John, because I was, again, I've not preached this before. I was right. praying for you guys this morning. And that scripture in Psalm 37, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fail for the Lord. They will not fail for the Lord holds them by the hand. And I wrote down ordered steps, not leaps and jumps. You know, it says the steps of the godly, not the leaps, not the jumps. So I think the key to do with our busyness is if I can say this and then I'll explain it. I've never seen this before, but um, is when you live from eternity, not for eternity, then everything in your life is prioritized from that place. Yes. Wow. So as a Christian, because I know I'm only passing through, then why am I going to prioritize things I might not live long enough to see? Uh, why am I going to prioritize things that don't really matter? So I start from eternity and work my way back. But what I hadn't seen before, John, is that I went through this psalm and I found nine steps. And they all, they all start with this, each verse starts with one word. Okay. Trust in the Lord. Dwell. Feed. Delight. Commit. Rest. Wait. Cease from anger. Don't fret. Wow. Now there's nine steps. In a, and you know what the Lord said to me? There are nine gifts of the spirit. So we operate in our calling. There are nine fruits of the spirit. So we develop our character and then there are nine steps of consistency. So we walk with Jesus daily. Wow. Now I've never seen, I've never seen that before. I'm glad this was recorded, mate. This is awesome. You can preach it. No problem. No copyright. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go through verse 37 uh, of Psalm 37, you think, okay, if I'm told to trust, what does that look like every day? If I'm told to dwell, then I shouldn't sit in front of the TV from nine o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. My prayer is that this time of solitude, and Father, I pray right now for everybody listening to me, that this time of solitude, you will put a desire in people to search out your word and to journal and to write a diary with you, to keep a love letter written with you every day. And I say, Lord, please do for my dear brothers and sisters what you've done for me. Let that bread of life feed us every day. Because, Lord, we want to dwell, we want to feed, and we want to delight in you. We want to rest in you. We want to wait for you to go first in our lives. And we want to cease from anger, and we don't want to fret.
Father, I pray this will be a great encouragement to my brothers and sisters because this really works. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Danny, amazing as ever and as usual. We really appreciate you coming on. And uh, like we did say at the start of this program, uh, we can't wait to have you back in the house. And uh, look, you know, if we can arrange between now and then, yeah, we'd love to sure. have you uh, on our online on a, on a Sunday uh, yeah. service. That would be awesome. But um, I just want to thank Pastor Danny for being a part of the program. As you who have been watching and listening, our Centerpoint Church friends and family, we thank you for tonight. We trust you've enjoyed Talk the Walk. And uh, we look forward to joining you again at another time. Goodbye and God bless. God bless you all. Bye-bye.